Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm almost finished building a curved hotel for the front of my layout. The back wall and roof have been the most challenging elements of the build so far. In this episode I'm going to show how I approached these challenges and give you tips for building curved walls and roofs. I measured the base along the curve and designed the wall with windows and door placements. In Inkscape I stuck two copies of this to a sheet of half millimeter card. I find that multiple layers of thin card is much easier to work with than single layers of thick card. I scored along the score lines and cut them both out. The thin card bends easily along these score lines. I placed one of the pieces against the building but I didn't glue it. It's just resting against the frame. I used bits of electrical tape to hold the wall tightly against the building. Electrical tape is good because it grips tightly but it's easy to peel off later. With one layer in place I cover the other layer with thin PVA glue. And then I mount it on top of the piece already in place. A little more tape keeps it tightly stuck. After the glue is dried I peel off the top layer of tape. I print off some wall texture and note which way is up. This will just go in place like this. I'll leave an overhang to wrap around the edges later. I use the thicker PVA here so that it doesn't seep into the paper and cause the colours to run. I just push it into place and smooth it down. Once the glue has had a chance to dry, I pick away the red tape holding the bottom layer against the hotel. This leaves a component which holds its shape and is easy to work with. I cut away the surplus tape by holding the curved part around the edge of my mat. I fold the texture around the edges and then the rest is done as usual. I cut through the window apertures both ways and wrap the texture tightly around the edges. Using the crochet hook here helps to get the edges nice and crisp. I make windows using the sticky label method and then glue them into place. I used thicker than average acetate here and that means that the windows remain flat and they don't end up curving too. Some strips of card give me a place to mount the curtains. And then once done I simply glue the whole thing onto the building. Now for the main challenge, the roof. I knew that the most important thing was to find the right shape. But what shape? If the roof was completely flat, then it would be a curved shape that was the same as the floor plan. If however the shape wasn't curved, if it was a simple rectangle, and then we tilted it 90 degrees, then it would be bent. It would be bent right around the wall. So somewhere in the middle, the roof will be partly curved in shape and it will partly bend. You can see this by tilting the floor plan upwards and it's clear to see that the edges rise too high away from the wall. The curve has to be less and the component has to bend so that everything joins up. I've not done maths or geometry in almost 30 years so I thought I'd have to make this up as I went along. I turned to Inkscape. Here is the floor plan that I showed you a few weeks ago. I split it into its component parts two rectangles and three wedges, two of which are the same. So that's four separate shapes. I measured the gable and the roof needs to be 53 millimetres long. The rectangular parts are easy. Each rectangle needs to become 53 millimetres high. But what about the wedges? We could just stretch them to the right height. But if we put this little rectangle here and then stretch the wedge, we see that the curve gets tighter, not less. It's even more pronounced if we do it like this. So that's no good. Let's do a tiny bit of maths. When laid flat, the rectangles as part of the floor plan were 47.5 millimetres. And we stretched these to 53 millimetres. 53 divided by 47.5 equals 1.1158. That means that the rectangle is now 111.579% of the size that it was. So let's use Inkscape's transform tool to change the wedges by this amount. There we are, we now have bigger wedges. We can't put these together to make the roof though as it is now too big. The circumference of these wedges has increased and it won't match up with the wall. Let's take a look at the original wedges. By drawing a rectangle here, we can see where the outer edges are. Move the rectangle over here, 
We can now see how much wider the new wedges are compared to the originals. Let's repeat this for the inner edge. Now we can use snapping to draw a shape from the edges that covers the new wider part. Then we can use the subtraction tool. We can cut away these shapes from the wedges. This leaves us with the larger wedges but with the same circumference as the original floor plan. I want the roof to overhang the walls by 2mm, so I add a 4mm wide line along the edge. 2mm is on the inside of the shape, leaving 2 on the outside. I can then use the union function to make this part of the wedge. Finally, I add guidelines to help me do the tiling later. I use the interpolate function for this. Now it's time to put it all together. Here's our final shape. Is it right? If we overlay the original floor plan, we can certainly tell that it's different. It's deeper, and it definitely is less curved. We won't know until we print it. So let's print it onto copier paper and take a look. I carefully cut it out, and I was incredibly happy that it seemed to fit perfectly. So I printed it to sticky label and mounted it to one millimeter card. I pre-bent the card slightly and used Uhu on the roof's ribs. This meant that I could just hold it in place and the glue would grip tightly after a few moments. I used Scale Scene's slate roof tiles for the roof. These are cut out in strips. Because the roof both curves and bends, I couldn't just stick them on directly without the paper crumpling. So I cut 80 individual little slits along the strip from the edge to the midway point. I applied a bead of glue to the roof and then using the guidelines that I added earlier I can slowly add the strip, partly overlapping the strip before it. PVA gives you a few seconds to make adjustments with the crochet hook to get the alignment of the tiles as close to perfect as possible. The overlapping ends can be sliced off. And here after cutting 65 strips of tiles and over 5,000 little slits, the last layer of tiles is added to the roof. I am quite happy with that. If you found this useful, please press the thumbs up button on this video because that will help others find this video as well. I skipped through the Inkscape part quite quickly. If you're interested for a step-by-step -step version, please let me know in the comments. Here's a look back at how I got the shape of the hotel's floor plan. My Chandwell channel members have been following along. If you'd like to join them, please consider joining my channel as well. Just press this silver button. I should have this hotel finished by the next video. So until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.